Welcome to Euro PCR 2025. My name is Angela McInerney and I'm an interventional cardiologist from Galway in Ireland. And today I have the pleasure of being joined by Ole de Bakker from Copenhagen and Didier Cheche from Toulouse. You're very welcome. Uh, thank, you. thank you. So today we're here to discuss two very important trials, the two-year data of the SMART trial and the five-year data of the Evolute Low Risk. Um, so these are very important trials that have a, an impact on how we manage our patients today. So Didier, I'm going to start with you as the yeah. PI of the SMART trial. So um, the SMART trial was in patients with small aortic annulus. Yeah. So why was it important to investigate these patients specifically? So it was quite important to uh, investigate the small annulus population because uh, uh, we figured out that it was mainly about a female population. And we know that the, the women in general are underdiagnosed, underrepresented in the, all the cardiovascular uh, trials. And so for the first time, we had a data set that was valuable to better understand the outcomes in this specific population. And what we did see in the SMART trial, uh, so just a reminder, to remind us about the definition of the uh, small annulus, it was less than four. 430 uh, millimeter square and it was a comparison of a balloon expandable platform, TAVI with a balloon expandable platform, Sapien, Sapien 3, Sapien 3 Ultra, and a self-expanding platform, the Evolute, Evolute Pro Plus or FX. And what we could see in this randomized trial is was for the primary uh, endpoint, uh, that was a composite of uh, death, uh, disabling stroke, and heart failure rehospitalization, there was a key points at one year, about 10% in terms of occurrence of the, the, uh, the primary endpoint, and that was really reassuring. And then the second uh, co-primary endpoint was an hemodynamic uh, endpoint, and we could see that there was less uh, high gradients with the Evolute platform, greater EOAs, lower rate of uh, severe patient prosthesis match, so once again, in this small annulus population, mainly uh, a female population, reassuring data in terms of clinical outcomes and better hemodynamics with the self expanding platform at one year. Yeah, so very reassuring data, but what about at two years? Did we see the same sort of picture? Uh, yeah, you're right. It was exactly the same thing in terms of clinical outcomes, exactly the same. And then for the hemodynamics, still uh, a better mean gradient above uh, 20 of severe patient prosthesis mismatch with the self-expanding supranular platform. And there were tiny minor differences that we didn't see at one year. Uh, so to make it short, uh, we saw a, a higher rate of uh, subclinical leaflet thrombosis in the balloon expandable arm. And that was quite a surprise because we didn't expect that. That. Uh, and there were numerically a higher, uh, more frequent uh, transient ischemic attack still in the, in the balloon expandable harm. So we need to wait for a longer follow-up, uh, but these were signals that we need to pay attention to. So promising data from the Evolute platform and particularly in relation to the hemodynamics, but as you say, it's just two-year data and we, in this particular population who are at high risk of patient prosthesis mismatch and mm. uh, possibly valve dysfunction at longer-term follow-up, we do need longer-term follow-up yeah. in those patients. But we are starting to get that um, data for uh, the Evolute platform in particular in terms of longer-term data. And we've had the Evolute low-risk five-year yeah. um, data released recently, Ole. Yeah, indeed. I mean, the Evolute Low Risk, just to remind, it's the trial that was conducted in low risk patients. Yeah, so, not really an uh, age cutoff, but the mean age was there around 73 years, uh, but all low risk patients. Yes, so these are typically patients who have a longer life. Uh, lifespan, life expectancy, which is good. That gives the opportunity to investigate also what is going on at five years, maybe in the future up to 10 years. And um, indeed, we had already data up to two to three years reported. Now we have the five-year data, uh, the Evolute versus surgery, because that was a trial. It was the Evolute Etavi with Evolute platform versus uh, Sauer. So what did it show with the primary endpoint was a, a well-chosen primary endpoint, I think, really important endpoints, mortality or disabling stroke. There's no doubt about this endpoint. And it was uh, really equipoise. I mean, for Etavi with Evolute versus Sauer, we had 16 or 15.5 percent in, in, in both arms, so really on top of each other for this uh, important clinical endpoint. Um, there were a couple of for secondary endpoints, uh, pacemaker or atrial fibrillation. Typically, there's a bit more pacemaker in the TAVI arm, a bit more atrial fibrillation in the su surgical arm. But anyway, that's the, that confirmed already previous data. Mm -hmm. And then it's very important, of course, uh, long term, we want to know about the durability. Yes, that's, that's the data we really need and want. I think it's very reassuring data, really robust data up to five years. You see that this excellent hemodynamic performance of this particular platform, TAVI platform, remains completely stable up to five years. So actually, it 
confirms the excellent durability and valve performance up to five years. And this is data that we have been waiting for, really, isn't it? Mm. The longevity data with, with TAVI in these younger, lower risk yeah. patients. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. I mean, look, there is some interesting data actually from a Swedish, uh, from a Swedish uh, sweetheart. Think, I think these were surgical patients, so patients undergoing sour, and that shows that if you are treating patients of around the 70 years of age, uh, low risk, these patients have typically around eight to 12 years of lifespan span left. So we need these data. We don't only need this one year or two year data. We need to have a real robust answer on what is the best therapy or valve for a particular patient we need these long-term data and so I'm even looking I mean this five years is a great uh, landmark uh, already in the results but even up to 10 years I think it's important and there uh, there is some 10-year data from the notion study yeah. right I mean how does that compare to the evolute low risk five-year data and what what do we know about yeah. the 10-year data with an earlier generation valves for sure but yeah true I mean look notion was actually uh, also low risk patients Mm -hmm. but they were clearly older. Yes, the average age, their mean age was around 80. The low risk uh, five years is, is 72, 73 years old, but also low risk. It confirmed exactly the same. So uh, clinically, on, their, these curves are almost on top of each other, surgery versus TAVI with Evolute, and also the valve durability there up to 10 years is confirmed. I mean, I think the real moderate or severe structural valve deterioration rate was, was clearly less than 3% at 10 years. So this is really extremely promising data, I would say. And mm. I think I would, if we'd have to bet, I, would, I think the evolute low risk will, will probably show at 10 years the same. It's, at least that's what we all hope as a community, tougher community as well. Yeah, and time will tell, I guess. But I guess, you know, we still have this issue about pacemakers, right? Mm. I mean, uh, definitely the evolute low risk, higher rate of yeah. pacemaker with the evolute uh, platform in comparison sure. to uh, Saver. I mean, does this impact, the, does, do pacemakers have an impact on, um, on our patient outcomes? Yeah, it's true. If you look back to the Evolute low risk five year uh, data, well, initially the, the, at five years, there's a clear difference. As I told you, a pacemaker is higher in Evolute. I think up to five years, it adds up to 27% versus 11% in, in the surgical arm. It's clear, uh, clearly higher risk. I think in contemporary practice, we can probably yeah. bring that down already with the, with the Tower Evolute arm. But anyway, what was important, there was a sub analysis showing that indeed having a pacemaker implant, yes or no, at five years, there's no impact on clinical events not on mortality or heart failure. So that's important data as well. It, you don't pay a penalty except for that you have the pacemaker implant, but you don't pay a penalty on, on important clinical endpoints such as mortality or, or stroke or heart failure. And uh, maybe on top of that, just to yeah. bounce on your uh, uh, comment, um, the smart trial was more about a contemporary practice and the pacemaker rates were much more lower than mm -hmm. what we saw in the Evolute Loris trial. Yeah. And uh, if we compare uh, the self expanding platform to the balloon expandable, the rates were not significantly uh, diffi uh, di different statistically. Yeah. Yeah. So that was reassuring. Contemporary practice, the cusp of a lab technique, mm. we yeah. can achieve quite low rate of pacemaker in, in, uh, in our daily practice. Yeah, I think we've definitely changed um, the proportion of pacemaker pacemakers that we're putting in with yeah. the change in the implant technique. So Didier, just coming back to you then. Yeah. So this is really promising data, smart data out to uh, two years in small aortic annulus, evolution low risk data out to five years. I mean, how do we translate this for our, our patients coming in with severe aortic stenosis into our practice tomorrow? So low risk, young patient arrives in severe aortic stenosis. How do we um, approach their treatment? Yeah, this is a very important uh, question. And I would say that if uh, this low risk patient uh, has a small aortic annulus, I would put the hemodynamic uh, uh, issue into consideration within the decision making. And if there is a high risk of severe patient prosthesis mismatch, because low risk patients more active, you, won't, you don't want to impact the quality of life. I would use a platform with the better hemodynamics of so a self-expanding platform, tailoring the procedure, the technique to make sure that I get no pacemaker, a low pacemaker rate. I keep the access to the coronary arteries. So I would say there is no reason not to use a self-expanding platform in a lower risk patient, uh, given what we have uh, learned from the smart two years and uh, as Ole has mentioned from the uh, Evolute low risk five years. And finally, Ole, you know, we are expecting new uh, mm. guidelines for the management of uh, valvular heart yeah. disease. Yeah. I mean, do we have enough uh, data to expect a change in those guidelines? Mm. What do you think? Yes, a bit speculation, of course, yes. but I think, honestly, yes, I do think we have some data now that justifies this. I expect some 
some coming down in age. Uh, I mean, I, first of all, I think it's maybe the guidelines come away from just a pure focus on age already. There are a lot of other factors that has to be considered. But I expect, in a way, if the European guidelines put the bar now at 75, that may fall down to 70. Look, evolute low risk, the mean age is 72, 73 there. So that means there's plenty of patients. Half of the patients are younger than 72. And now showing promising data up to five years, clinical, a complete equipoise, having them the comfort of a less invasive uh, procedure and having the superior uh, valve uh, durability or, or uh, valve performance, I think that justifies to me an, 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 a change in the guidelines, yes. So I think we've had a really great conversation today, really kind of took a deep dive into these two studies. So it has been really informative. It's very clear that we have increasing data now on TAVI in these younger, lower risk patients and in these complicated patients such as those with small annulus. And it's very exciting going forward. So we will see what the guidelines show in a few months. Yes. And with that, I'd like to thank both of you for joining me and thank I hope you. you enjoy the rest of PCR 2025. Thank you. Thank you very much.